So how did we get here to the post-lump superness? Come along, I'll tell you the story of the surgery. When we last left you, our little sneaky boy had a lump, a butt lump to be exact. And it wasn't bothering him much, but then he started to chew on it. And we weren't sure if it was growing or shrinking anyway, and we didn't want it to be harder for him if it did grow, so we scheduled for it to be removed. But he had to wait a week, so the vet recommended he wear a donut. A donut is made to function like a cone of shame, but it is supposed to be more comfortable for the dog, so we bought one to give it a try. Snoopy was not happy about the donut, and in fact he was much less than thrilled to have such a cumbersome thing attached to himself. And unfortunately our short stint with the donut revealed that it didn't prevent him from reaching the lump. It didn't even seem like he had to put much effort toward reaching it. We even tried different placement, but it was no use. So I went by the pet store and I picked him out a cone of shame. And I figured we would try to not use it when there with him, but I could only give him so much attention before it was noticed by Iggy that love was not being given evenly. I tried to make the pets as fair as possible, but even just a little attention away, and Snoopy would be back at the lump, so it became time for a cone. At first, he didn't know what to do or how to act, but I assured him to just be himself and that if he had a positive attitude, all good things would happen and everything would work out for him. And of course, when he took on such a positive attitude, he was accepted right away by the rest of the pack. Of course, there was an adjustment period to find the right fit. And we also renamed the Cone of Shame to the satellite dish instead. Soon the day arrived and Snoopy came to the vet for his surgery. Six hours later, Snoopy was done. He was still groggy from the anesthesia, and he whined a bit and seemed very disoriented and a bit scared. So we showed him some new toys that perked him up enough to get home. At home, he seemed more comfortable, but it would be quite a few hours where he drifted in and out of sleep. So we just remained at his side and comforted him the rest of the afternoon. After several hours, he was awake enough to have some green beans. He had not had anything to eat or drink since the night before. Of course, we had to make things somewhat fair and share the green beans so that no one was left pouting. And from there, it was just all about waiting for him to recover and attending to his every need. He also had two baby teeth removed that had not fallen out so we did that to minimize the times he would have to be under should he need to have the teeth removed later. The vet said he could eat like normal since they were only small teeth, but we decided to give him some soft foods anyway, like plain chicken, sardines, and broth with spinach to get him to drink. He really enjoyed the broth and it was a great thing to see him finally drinking after so long going without anything. But he had really been delirious most of the day so it was really hard to get him to wake up enough to get something in him. The drinking part was quite messy and he did spend some time cleaning up his satellite dish. After fluids, we thought we, he might feel like having a little potty break, so we went ahead and brought him outside. Once he was outside, he was a little bit wobbly at first, so we decided to give him an extra special head massage and also bring out a toy. Once the toy was brought out, things started to get a little more normal. He gained some energy and spent some time moving around and getting comfortable with the toy plus the satellite dish. He would try to use it as a scoop and try to work around it in order to get the toy 
He felt very proud of himself once he had mastered picking up his little green bone. After outdoor time, he got more rest despite the jealous onlookers and finally got some extra special rubs as he had gone around his satellite dish and started to bite at his incision. Our concern grew, so we decided to watch him around the clock and even brought him into bed with his satellite dish. We also didn't want him going down the steps, so whenever he wanted out, we decided to carry him. And we also made him a smaller water dish so that he could more easily get a nice, good drink. For the most part, he was his mischievous self, eating grass and looking for exciting bugs and things to chase. And he could get around his satellite dish and bite at his stitches, so it was not something we could really prevent with the current satellite dish. Here we are doing a warm compress. It helped the wound. But finally we decided to get him a larger, deeper satellite dish so that he could definitely not get to his wound because by now he really had been at it. So we wanted to make sure he had the best view in the truck. So we did remove the satellite dish because it was flapping about in the wind. And then he got the greatest view of the gorgeous land and countryside. And I think that it's helpful in recovery to also have pleasant things happen and not just be confined in the house or in a cage. So him being able to see the grass go by and the beautiful world outside might shorten his recovery time, or at least we hoped. So this new cone worked very well, but the damage had been done and his incision site swelled and became red and he actually stopped eating and became very lethargic for a day. We almost brought him back to the vet, but we decided to try antibiotics that we had in the house and we had been unable to use for our old dog who had recently passed away. So what I did was size the pills for Snoopy since he was a smaller dog, and I used some dosing charts that I found online and I ended up being able to break the antibiotics in half for the correct dose, ensuring that I would not be overdosing Snoopy. We did the same with the anti-inflammatory pills that we had because we had a lot on hand already. We figured if this didn't work in 24 hours, we would go back to the vet or at least give them a call. But after giving him the pills, we gave him some time to recover and we also began spraying his wound with a special spray used on farm animals and it worked wonders. Remember you always want to be careful and don't do things at home without proper knowledge because animals are fragile and if you do the wrong thing there can be great consequences for your little fur baby. And when in doubt call the vet as we did so for the most part we only did things that we were either very confident about or we did um, ask an expert. So after that next 24 hours, Snoopy came back and his wound swelling had subsided and he was more like normal eating, drinking, and being his rambunctious self. One of the funniest things during recovery has been watching him play with his green squeaky bone. The combination of the cone and the toy makes for a stimulating game and it even seems to bring him more entertainment than the different expensive mazes that we've bought for him to solve. So this was an inexpensive yet very interactive activity for him and kept his attention for a long time while he improved his cone satellite dish skill. And as you can see, he really can't get to his stitches now, so that's a good thing. But we did limit his play with his favorite playmate. Other excitement involved me bringing him to work with me, but it was pretty easy. And at the end of the day, when his stitches have healed quite a bit, we were able to remove the cone and watch him get some scratches in. And um, he also had many things that he needed to clean and lick, but 
look at that happy face. Like, it is so funny. But I'll save you the part about him licking every other orifice of his body. He got in there. He just um, had not been able to lick himself or groom himself properly. And of course, with lots of pets, there were other neglected babies in the house, so I made sure to give proper pets all around. And he also did get a bath at some point because he barked in his dish. But after a while, he has really recovered greatly and he's able to go up and down the back steps with ease. We are allowing him to have the shorter satellite dish so that he can be a little more interactive and have an easier time getting water and food. And as long as we're watching him, for the most part, he's not interested in his wound now because I don't think it's hurting him as much. And we're really glad we had the lump removed because we think it would have gotten infected anyway because of his chewing at it. And so in another week he'll have his stitches out. And so for now he's a little less lumpy but still just as cute. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed watching this video.